Welcome. We're, we're going to begin on time today since it looks like everyone is here. I'm Katherine Carter and welcome to the 10th annual Black History Month celebration of the Essex County Prosecutor's Office. We will open our, our uh, celebration tonight with an invocation from Reverend uh, Fletcher. In honor of God, who is the author and finisher of my faith. Father, we thank you. We bless you, we glorify and we magnify your name. For we know that without you, none of this would be possible. Even as we commence with this Black History Month program, we bring ourselves into your presence as we offer our prayers, our praise, and our supplication. On this month, we celebrate our culture, remember the legacy and the love of those who have gone before us. We recognize that we are standing on the shoulders of giants, trailblazers who have paved the way, opened doors, and even laid down their lives so that we could have the privileges we have today. We thank you for the partnership between Essex County Prosecutor's Office and Noble. We thank you for Prosecutor Stevens, Chief McGuire, President Giles Ship. We thank you for their collaboration. And even now, God, we pray for families who have lost loved ones to COVID-19, those who have survived COVID-19, and anyone who may be under doctor's care, may have to undergo surgery, or have any type of medical condition. We pray for them in the name of Jesus. I pray for our honorees. We ask, we acknowledge them and show our appreciation for their service in whatever capacity it might be. We thank you for their families. We thank you for sharing them with us. We thank you that you have blessed them with abilities and knowledge that are gonna further our endeavors as well as glorify you. So right now, God, we ask for your presence and your blessings over this ceremony and always. In yes. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And now we'll have the national anthem. And now we will hear from Prosecutor Stevens. Thank you, Kathy. Can everybody hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. Great, all right. Uh, first of all, I wanna thank everybody for uh, attending. Uh, there's so many great folks. This is a, an awesome uh, response and I really appreciate all of you taking your time. Uh, we have some folks who are extremely busy and could have done and other things today, uh, especially they want to acknowledge I see our county executive, Joe DiVincenzo is on the call. So Jody, we appreciate you. We know that you're so busy with the vaccines and everything. So you clearly could do some other things. And we wanna thank you for your attendance and for the vaccines that you're providing to folks uh, in Essex County, doing a great job there. Uh, I wanna thank everybody also I wanna thank for using that clip of Whitney Houston, uh, my home girl from East Orange uh, who we miss so much and uh, that's very reminiscent for me because I happen to have had the pleasure being a giant fan of going to that Super Bowl at 25 and so that brings back a lot of memories. But we're here today to celebrate Black history. The story of enslaved Africans who are brought to the shores of America is clearly compelling. It's a story which plainly depicts the glory and the gory of American history. Now, while it's essential to remember the atrocities of the past, I think it's really more important that we acknowledge that we all have more opportunities to move forward than any of our predecessors have. And the youth of today will also have even more, but they need our help. To quote the Honorable Thurgood Marshall, none of us got where we are solely by pulling ourselves up by the bootstraps. We go here because somebody, a parent, teacher, Ivy League crony, or a few nuns bent down and helped pick us up by the boots. So if nothing else, during this Black History Month, let us commit ourselves to help the youth of our community, especially this community, to find their voice, to find their purpose. And I assure you that it will all be to our benefit. In closing, let me just say the ECPO, the Essex County Prosecutor's Office, is extremely happy 
to once again have partnered with Noble to continue our tradi tradition of celebrating the achievements of African-Americans. This year, we have an outstanding group of honorees and a great keynote speaker, Mr. Anthony Johnson from WABC TV, who I thank so very, very much for not only your participation today, but being a friend to ECPO and Essex County and all of New Jersey. We thank you for your efforts. Now, despite the virtual nature of today's program, I really hope you'll be able to appreciate the great accomplishments that all of these honorees have, have done and that we're going to showcase today. So congratulations to our honorees and thank you all for attending today. Thank you. And now it is my pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker, Anthony Johnson. Many of you know him if you tune in to Channel 7 on Eyewitness News. He's a familiar face. He's an award-winning journalist, one of the best in the business. He's been with ABC for 20 years now. He began his career in radio in Washington, D.C., and then came to the New York, New Jersey area to work at 1010's Winds. He most recently has done some fabulous reporting about Congressman Lewis, who he worked for, and he's just an all around great guy. So without further ado, I will introduce to some and present to others, Anthony Johnson. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you so much. You're I told welcome. Kathy when she wrote a bio for me, I said, well, look, if I knew it was going to be that good, I'd have had you write in 30 years ago when I was looking <laughs> for jobs. So thank you so much, everybody. It's a, an honor and a pleasure to be able to talk to you just for a few minutes. And we're on a Zoom conversation. And I've done so many Zooms over the last almost 12 months now when you think about it. So one thing that I'm not going to do is talk for a very long time, because actually on these Zoom conferences, I've seen people fall asleep. So I'm hoping that that will not be the case this afternoon. But I thank you. I thank the prosecutor. Thank you for inviting me here and all of you for allowing me just to take a few moments of your time. And Joe D, I don't see your face up here, but I understand that you're there. And yes, you are doing an amazing job. You know, we've talked several times, as you know, he did suffer from COVID-19 as did the sheriff. And then ultimately I did too. So, you know, we've had some heart wrenching conversations over the past few months about some of the challenges dealing with COVID-19. And I know that all of you out there are really dealing with the struggle with COVID-19. But the one thing that COVID-19 has exposed is all of the inequities that we have known about throughout our entire existence, but they have certainly come to light during this whole crisis during the pandemic. So I know so many of you have been dealing with that on a very personal level. I did a court case today. I was dealing with Bruce Springsteen of all people. And it was one of the weirdest court cases that I've covered because he's sitting with this lawyer in the lawyer's office, the judge uh, is sitting in the judge chambers. And then all of a sudden you have uh, the, the, the okay. defense attorney okay. also in another location. So there's a little noise in the back. Muted. I think I got muted there for a moment. That did it all on its own. So sometimes with these computer glitches, we'll just go ahead and work through them. Believe me, I've seen it all with the Zoom conversations. But I'd like to take a few moments to congratulate each and every one of you for the work that you are doing and that you continue to do in your communities and your locales to make things better. Joe D, once again, I was talking about you. I don't know if you heard that, but saying everything is being done, every effort is being done to make sure that those of us in the black community are getting access to the vaccines, which is very, very important for us at this point in time. And I can understand all of the reasons that black people are hesitant about the vaccines, there's just no doubt about it. We can look at history and that history is not good. When it comes to black people and medicine, we know about the Tuskegee experiment. We know about the women having the uteruses taking out without them ever knowing what was going on. Girls as young as 12 and 14 years old having something like that egregious crime happening against them. 
But this is a time when we all have to try to rally together, come together and make sure that our community gets the shot because it would be very unfortunate during this time as we think about black history for us to be the ones right now to be left behind in this situation because all that means is more sickness, more death and more tragedy for black families. So I really wanna go ahead and celebrate all of you who have been working very hard dealing with those challenges. I don't know what you're doing, prosecutor, in the courts. I'm sure you got a ton of cases that need to come before a judge and deal with those things. But I know things are moving on. I know the process is very slow, but you should be awarded for taking on that challenge and making uh, everything the way it's supposed to be during these very, very difficult times. You know, I was looking at a story this morning in the state of Alabama, they want to basically eliminate the right of black people to protest. That essentially is what the law is going to be. This sounds like something you would see in Alabama in the 1950s and long before that. And I was thinking to myself, as we had all these George Floyd protests and all these things that were taking place in the black communities in Essex County, I don't really recall any violence. I remember plenty of protests. I don't remember any violence. So my solution to the folks in Alabama is to come to Essex County, New Jersey, and to talk to the people up here, the experts who know how to deal with these kinds of protests and find out how they could have large protests just less than 10 miles from New York City where they did have some incidents and issues. But right here in Essex County, they were able to have huge protests, talk about the same issues, demand the same amount of justice. And yet, I don't recall anything really major happened. Maybe prosecutor, you know about something, but I covered protests in Newark. And we talked about the fact that they were pretty over at 11 o'clock. If they said 10 o'clock, people were leaving at 9.55. So I don't know how you guys did it. But I think, you know, when you start to hear about these laws, and we have to be careful about what's going on in this country because we know exactly what they're trying to do. They're trying to punish African-Americans and stop their right to protest. Also, I'm, it addressed the issue of police defunding. And I, and I wanna just make, this is my opinion on that. Look, I don't want to defund the police. I don't think anybody really wants to defund the police. What we would like to see is just more and a fairer equitable system and whatever that takes, and maybe more emphasis on mental health and all of the different aspects of law enforcement. Because too often, and I've covered so many cases, too often when you really look at the end result of any crime or any egregious act, there's always a mental health component that is involved in it somewhere. So I think when we start hearing these kinds of conversations, we should start thinking about what they're really asking us to do. They're asking us to pay more attention to understanding the mental health of the people that you come in contact with or have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Remember, for 400 years, Black people have been living in trauma, 400 years of trauma and it's generational trauma. And it's continued to be passed down year after year from person to person. I was telling somebody recently, people are talking about when we have the talk with our kids, that's nothing new. That was handed down to us from slavery. When the mother had to tell the daughter to do what the master asked them to do so he wouldn't separate the family, wouldn't kill the husband, take the son and sell him somewhere that they would never see him again. So we've always had to talk the talk and that is part of the generational trauma that we have experienced throughout our entire existence here in the United States. So I know you guys are out there, you're on the front line, you're dealing with people that are the victims of all of that trauma. So hopefully in the future, we can work with them, deal with them, understand them better and they can understand what you guys have to do. And we can then start to talk to them about why they do the things that they do, why they make the choices that they make. You know, we can make black history. You know, black history just doesn't have to happen or have already happened. We can make black history by going ahead and helping these people see a better light 
and hopefully one day having more hope in the future. And all of you are on the front line of that. All of you play a role in that. All of you play a very important role in that. And we are so appreciative. As a journalist, I have learned to be appreciative of law enforcement. Doesn't necessarily mean I always make you guys happy. That's not the job of what I do. But I appreciate the work that you do, continue to do the things that you do, know that all of us, especially the African-Americans who do this job, appreciate what you do and we support you in your efforts as long as justice is the first call. Like I said, I don't really wanna talk for a very long time. Kathy already put me on a time limit. I knew how much time that I had. This event needs to be done in one hour, but you guys, we love you. Continue to celebrate black history, not only in February, celebrated every day, all the time, because we are so important to this country. We have made this country what it is. You know, we're standing here and all of us have these bright lights pointed in our face. Well, Edison invented the light bulb, but a black man invented the filament to make the light bulb work. <laughs> so without him, this we wouldn't be able to do a Zoom conference. So keep strong, keep doing what you're doing, know that we support you, and thank you very much for giving me this opportunity just to share a brief few words with you. And thank you very much for the honor. Prosecutor, thank you very much for allowing me to talk to you. You guys are great. And I look forward to the day that we can see each other again in person. Thank, <laughs> thank you. you so much, Anthony. We do appreciate your time and your message. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And next, we're going to have our chief, uh, McGuire, introduce one of our honorees, Anthony Ambrose. Thank you, Kathy. Well, <clears throat> I don't know where to start when talking about Director Ambrose. Director Ambrose has is many things to many people. He is a change agent for law enforcement. He is my brother from another mother. He is also and can take credit for the, the founder or the person who started Black History Month here at the Essex County Prosecutor's Office. Director Ambrose has been a mentor to me and so many law enforcement executives around the county and around the state of New Jersey. Um, I'll read a little bit about his bio, but his bio does him no service because his contributions to law enforcement, his contributions to the community here in Newark and in Essex County can't be measured. Public Safety Director Ambrose was born and raised in the city of Newark. He raised both of it, he received both of his Bachelor's of Arts and Master's of Arts degree from Fairleigh Dickinson University. He is also a graduate of the FBI National Academy, which he tells me I need to go to at some point in time in my career. In 1986, Director Ambrose joined Newark Police Department as a police officer and rose through the ranks. He was promoted to the department's chief of police in 1999. In 2004, he was appointed as the police director. Director Ambrose joined the Essex County Sheriff's Office in 2006 and served as an undersheriff before being hired and transforming in 2008 the Essex County Prosecutors where he served as the Chief of Detectives, my current position. In 2015, for some reason, he left us and went back to the city of Newark and serves at, served as the public safety director where he managed the police, fire, and emergency management under the, under the Department of Public Safety with the goal of increasing the, the efficiency and effectiveness in delivering emergency services. He tapped director, the mayor tapped Director Ambrose to head the department beginning in January of 2016. As the head of the city of Newark's new public safety Director Ambrose assumed the helm and immediately initiated the process of consolidating police, fire, and emergency management operations. Director Ambrose oversees over 1,900 employees comprising of 1,000 sworn police officers, 600 firefighters, 350 civilian employees, and manages a budget that exceeds over $200 million. Director Ambrose attributes much of his success to his strong work, that work ethic and to simple doctrines, which he practices and consistently, consistently emphasizes. Relentless follow-up is the key to success. 
and treat people as if they are relatives you love and respect. Director Ambrose, along with Prosecutor Carolyn Murray, partnered with Noble back in 2012 to begin this very celebration that we are uh, taking part in today. Um, as you may or may not know, Director Ambrose has announced his retirement uh, effective March 31st of this year. That will be a blow to the city of Newark. It will be a blow and a loss to the citizens of Essex County and to law enforcement as a whole in the state of New Jersey. I know, Anthony, you talked a little bit about what's going on down in Alabama. I hope they do not come up here and try and steal Director Ambrose from us and get him down there because <laughs> they seem like they could absolutely use him uh, there and many places around the nation. Uh, but I am honored to be the one to present Director Ambrose with this award and uh, love him like I love my own brother, like I love my father. Thank you. Now we will pick up with uh, Chelsea Coleman, one of our assistant prosecutors. Thank you, Kathy. Um, this is uh, this. I, I'm glad everybody is hanging in there with us as this Zoom uh, award ceremony certainly is probably one of the more different things I think we've ever done. But you know, you have to try to to. Um, Roll with the punches, and as as Anthony Johnson said, you know, you do these. We're all used to it right now, but it still is a little different. So I thank you all for hanging in there with us. But uh, it's so important to do it because all these honorees are, are so so valuable and just so important that we uh, give them their due. Uh, obviously, it was important to start with uh, Director Ambrose, who's going to be leaving us. Uh, we're going to go to the opposite end now. A young lady who really is kind of. In the beginning of her career as she's moving forward as, as a younger attorney, Ms. Chelsea Coleman. She is an assistant prosecutor here at the Essex County Prosecutor's Office and where she's worked for all of five years. During her term in the office, um, she has been assigned to various uh, entities, including Domestic Violence Unit, the Adult Trial Section. Presently, she is assigned to our Special Victims Unit, SVU. Prior to being sworn in as an assistant prosecutor, Ms. Coleman completed her judicial clerkship for the Honorable Barry Weisberg and the Honorable Joseph Peon. She obtained her JD from Rutgers Law School here in Newark. While in college at Rutgers, she was a summer intern with the Essex County Prosecutor's Office for two years where she was first brought to our attention. It was her experience as an intern that really solidified her decision to become a career prosecutor. She's a member of the Black Prosecutors Association of New Jersey, the Essex County Bar Association, and other organizations. I'm proud to say that not only is she a lifetime resident of East Orange, uh, well, the city of Essex County, I should say, I jumped to the, to the uh, punchline, but she certainly hails from the city of East Orange, and we're very, very proud of her. Uh, she embodies the uh, entity of the Essex County Prosecutor's Office and our model to seek justice, serve justice, and do justice. So to Ms. Chelsea Coleman, congratulations. Thank you, Prosecutor, and thank you, Noble. Okay, our, our next awardee is Sergeant Destin, who's doing the introductions for him. Sergeant George. Just Sergeant real quick, George. I just want to I just want to thank uh, Ted, Mitch, and uh, Giles Ship. Very appreciative. Much deserved. Great. Next person is uh, Sergeant George's Destin. He's a retired East Orange police officer. Sergeant Destin was born in East Orange, New Jersey, and grew up in Suffolk, Virginia. Upon returning to New Jersey, he decided to start his career in law enforcement since he had a genuine love for helping others in his community. Sergeant Dustin has a total of 28 years of law enforcement experience. He was employed by the East Orange Police Department from January 1995 to April 2018. Sergeant Dustin currently serves on the local noble unit as the chapter executive board. He's a trustee. Sergeant Dustin has been happily married to the love of his life and his wife, Nicole, for 20 years. 
and is a proud father of two wonderful sons, Georges Jr. and Christopher. We salute you. Our next honoree is Sergeant Frazier. Sergeant Jason Frazier from the Montclair State Police Department. Sergeant Jason L. Frazier was born in East Orange, New Jersey and raised in Newark, New Jersey. A proud graduate of Beringer's High School class of 1999, Sergeant Frazier enrolled at Montclair State University and graduated with a BA in Family and Child Studies in 2004. In 2005, Sergeant Frazier studied I'm sorry, started his professional career in law enforcement at the Montclair State Police Department uh, in Montclair, New Jersey. He is a graduate of the Passaic County Police Academy in 2006. Sergeant Frazier served on the Montclair State University Police Community for the past 16 years and was promoted to the rank of Sergeant in August of 2020. Jason lives in Union County, New Jersey with the love of his life, Dr. Sadie D. Frazier, and beautiful daughter, Zoe Frazier. Sergeant Frazier is also a member of Omega Sci-Fi Fraternity Incorporated. We salute him. Thank you. Our next honoree is Detective Aine Green Farrow. Detective Aine Farrow is a detective at the S County Prosecutor's Office where she has worked for more than 20 years as a detective. Currently, she has served in several units in the office, most recently in the adult trial unit and the juvenile unit. She has handled various assignments and continuously serves the needs of the office and the community at large. Over the years, Detective Farrell has used her experience on and off the job to fuel her passion for community work, writing and empowering women of all ages through education and spiritual development as co-founder of her organization, Women on Solid Ground. Additionally, Detective Farrell holds a Bachelor of Arts degree from Hampton University and a Master's of Administrative Sciences from Fairleigh Dickinson University. Detective Farrell serves as co-president of the Parent Teacher Association is, and is currently a fellow at Newark Leadership. Thank you, Chief. I believe our next honoree will be introduced by Gwen Williams. Yes, our next honoree is Ms. Dara Govan. She is an assistant U.S. attorney um, here in New Jersey. Uh, Ms. Govan is a native of the city of Plainfield, New Jersey. She is a graduate of Morgan State University. Uh, after she graduated from Morgan State in 2001, she joined the Order of the Coif, graduate of Rutgers University School of Law. Uh, while attending Rutgers, she continued her legacy of leadership by serving as an associate editor of the Rutgers Law Review, and she served as chair of the Rutgers Moot Court Board and the Association of Black Law Students. Uh, Ms. Govan has worked for more years as a commercial litigator at a major law firm in New York and in New Jersey. Uh, she has for more than one decade uh, experience in providing both legal and leadership trainings for many nonprofit and social organizations, bar associations, and corporations. On January the 24th in 2011, she was sworn in as an assistant U.S. attorney here in the District of New Jersey. Currently, she is the immediate past president of the Garden State Bar Association. Uh, she previously served as regional director for Region 3, of the National Bar Association, uh, which encompasses both the states of New Jersey, Delaware, and Pennsylvania. And recently, her name has been submitted to become a Superior Court Judge here in Union County. Ms. Dara Go Govan, congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> when you can introduce our next award, yes, oh, well. Okay. Uh, Lieutenant, retired Lieutenant Ms. Sheila Hobson from the Essex County Prosecutor's Office, also as the um, chaplain for Noble. I had the opportunity of meeting Ms. Hobson when I first started here at the Prosecutor's Office. She was assigned to the Domestic Violence Unit, and that was the first unit I was assigned to. And before I read her bio, I just want to tell you that 
at the time she was there and dealing with victims, especially our female victims, she showed compassion, but she was no nonsense. She informed the victims of their rights and she encouraged them to exercise their rights when it came to being a victim and dealing with their current situation at that time. I have grown to know her over the years. She has been an exemplary person. She has been a person that not only has she worked in law enforcement for more than 25 years, but she has also supported her community. And one of the things about Ms. Hobson that if you didn't know it, she was a minister. She was studying at the time she was a detective here. And now I understand she has the pastor of the Grace Baptist Church in Forge, New Jersey. I miss Sheila working here in the prosecutor's office, but when I see her in the public and other um, places, she makes me proud that I can say that she is my friend and that she is a person that I look up to as a role model, Ms. Sheila Hopkins. The next person is the Honorable William Payne. He's Essex County Deputy Chief of Staff. Mr. Payne has served as Mr. Payne has served as a member of the New Jersey General Assembly from 1998 to 2008. Um, he was a Deputy Majority Conference Leader of the Assembly and Chair of the Regulatory Oversight Committee. He has also served as the vice chair of the budget committee and as a member of the human services committee. Mr. Payne serves as the commissioner of the Amistad Commission and as an Essex County deputy chief of staff. He is a graduate of Rutgers University and he holds a bachelor of arts degree in political science. He was honored in 2012 by the statewide African American Heritage Parade Committee, which appointed him to as the Grand Marshal of its annual parade. Mr. Payne is also chairman of the board of the Donald Payne School, Senior Global Foundation Incorporated. I have the honor of sitting in on weekly meetings with Mr. Payne. He brings to light the injustices that are served upon African-Americans as well as the great accolades for African-American. He never lets us forget our role in the community. The Honorable Mr. William Payne. Our, our next honoree is a member of our office, Keisha Richardson Gilbert. Keisha Richardson Gilbert is an East Orange resident and married to the love of her life and lifetime friend and support, Taiwan Gilbert, for 22 years. They have a beautiful daughter, Ishe, who was recently awarded the Noble Academic Scholarship. Keisha is a legal assistant under the direction of the prosecutor, Theodore N. Stevens, and Deputy Chief of Mata Rasul. Keisha has worked in various units during her tenure, including Chief Prime, Crime Team Unit, Organized Crime Unit, Victim Witness Advocacy Unit, Megan's Law, Juvenile Unit, CJP, Hello? and presently works on special projects. Hello? Over the past three years, Keisha has worked with DC Ahmad Rasul and his assistance to the co-founder of ECPO slash NJIT Star Student Night Program. Keisha has given Keisha has given community service to the city of East Orange, senior citizens food distribution during the pandemic since August of 2020. Serving thousands of families, Keisha is a member of the IBEW Local 1158 and is the chief shop steward for the prosecutor's office, providing union services to our members. Keisha, we salute you. Our next honoree is one of the few tonight who's not in law enforcement, and that is Daryl Terry, the president and CEO of Beth Israel Hospital. And he is truly one of our heroes working so vigilantly during this COVID uh, nightmare for all of us and now working to get folks vaccinated. His background is, is that he, uh, graduated from Rutgers University as an undergraduate, where he received a bachelor's degree and a certificate in business management 
He went on to Seton Hall University where he received his Masters of Public Health. And he has studied at Columbia University and Harvard University. Most importantly, he's been out there making sure that people of color are being properly cared for and treated during this pandemic. We honor you today, Mr. Terry. And our next honoree is Police Director Todd Warren. I believe the chief. Sorry about that, a little technical difficulty. Director Warren was born in the city of Newark and is a graduate of the University of Massachusetts with a bachelor's degree in political science and is presently pursuing his master's degree in administrative science at Fairleigh Dickinson University. In 1993, uh, Director Warren served as an ex county probation officer assigned to the juvenile family court. During his spare time, he began working with at-risk youth in ex county. In 1994, he began his career in law enforcement and graduated from the Essex County Police Academy in 1995. From 2004 to 2007, he served as the warden slash director of the Essex County Juvenile Detention Center. Presently, Director Warren, in his spare time, uh, other than serving the citizens of Orange, um, Director Warren is serving as an associate minister at the Paradise Baptist Church in Newark under the leadership of Bishop Jethro C. James. Director Warren, we salute you. And our next awardee is a very dear friend of our prosecutor. He will make the introductions. You're on mute. Great, thank you so much, Kathy. Next honoree is a, a good friend of mine, Ms. Althea R. Tweeten. Althea Tweeten is a native of St. Louis, Missouri. After graduating from Vashon High School in St. Louis, she attended Harris Teachers College, married, and moved to New Jersey, which she has called her home ever since. In 1973, Althea received a Bachelor of Arts degree from Newark State Teachers College, now Kane, then enrolled in a master's program in critical thinking and learning at Montclair State. She, teach, she taught uh, for 14, I'm sorry, 34 years, wow, 34 years, and ended at Passion Avenue School in Newark. She has had a very degree of uh, number of degrees and jobs along the way. She has stayed extremely active and she still is very active. She still owns a company called the uh, T-Shirt Plus, which is a custom printing company. And in 1991, she acquired her real estate license on top of that, where she, she takes referrals from past realtors in West Orange. She has been a member of several organizations and, and lives in West Orange now. And she's really one of the most active individuals in all of West Orange I've had a pleasure to know. She uh, has been a member of the uh, NAACP for 10 years, the Zonta Club. She was named Woman of the Year, in fact, from that entity for recognition of her business acumen. I think just as important and maybe even more so in her life, she uh, is a proud vassalist of a local chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha, of course, which is our vice president's uh, sorority and so many others. And she does a great job representing Greeks all through New Jersey, Miss Althea Tweeted. And our next awardee is Lieutenant Tyrone Williams. Lieutenant Tyrone Williams Jr. has served with the Moncare Police Department since July 1999. He is currently a member of many organizations, including Sentinels 69-87, Montclair's Minority Officers Association President, Montclair Police Athletic League Director, National Association of Black Law Enforcement Executives, Noble, Northern New Jersey chapter where he's a trustee. Lieutenant Williams was born and raised in Los Angeles, California. He attended Los Angeles schools and Caldwell University located in Caldwell, New Jersey where he received a BA in criminal justice. 
and he attended Seton Hall University in South Orange, New Jersey, where he received a master's degree in human resources administration. Lieutenant Williams proudly served his country while being a member of the United States Army. He served for approximately eight years before being honorably discharged. Lieutenant Tyrone Williams, we salute you. And our next awardee is Deputy Chief Anthony Woodson. Thank you, Kathy. Deputy Chief Woodson is retired from the East Orange Police Department. He was born in Farmville, Virginia. He was raised here in the city of Newark and he graduated from Irvington Tech in 1965. Upon graduation, he joined the Marine Corps he served in Vietnam from July of 68 to October of 69. He began his journey with the East Orange Police Department in September of 1973, started as a patrol officer in the patrol division. At that time, he later became a detective in the detective bureau. He continued to move up through the ranks, becoming a sergeant, a acting lieutenant, the lieutenant, captain, and of course, ending his career as deputy chief. And I know firsthand that Deputy Chief Woodson has been an inspiration to innumerable officers in the East Orange Police Department. But even after his retirement, he could not sit still. He still had a lot to offer. And he has certainly found his stride working with a tremendous organization, Cop to Cop, which certainly provides tremendous services to law enforcement and others at this critical juncture. Couldn't have a more deserving honoree, ladies and gentlemen, Deputy Chief Anthony Woodson. So I said something about this. I said, what do you think about the long because he read up on it. She actually he calls Fauci. So Hello. nothing about the Hello. Hello. If you if you if you're not speaking, you mute your button. mic. Mute your mic. They want to mute there, Earl. You muted, Kathy. Kathy, you're muted. Sorry. I was thanking all our honorees for participating in our event this evening and taking time to be a part of our Black History Month celebration. And now I will turn the program back over to Chief McGuire, who will have some closing remarks. Well, technical difficulties are an understatement. People have, <laughs> have to learn the mute button. <laughs> um, I will, on behalf of Prosecutor Stevens, uh, First assist, Assistant Sudeo and myself, I wanna thank all of you uh, for taking time out of your day to join us in this celebration. I know we call it Black History Month, and I know the boss always makes a joke why they give us the shortest month of the year, but we'll take it. And it's no excuse for us not to celebrate the history of African-Americans, not just in February, but every day of every month of every year. Uh, we have contributed so much uh, to the history of this country uh, and, and to what gone, has gone around the world um, African-Americans have been there at every step of the way. So again, I wanna thank you for coming out and joining us today. In the words of Russell Simmons, I'll say thank you for coming out. God bless and good night. We will close with a benediction by one of our detectives, Carlos Olmos. Good evening, everyone. Uh, congratulations to all the honorees. And if we can bow our heads as we close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace, your love, and your redemptive power. We especially thank you for the honorees and their families this evening. We thank you for the work they do each and every day to make a positive impact and difference in our communities. Please bless them, Lord. Please keep them and protect them. We also thank you for the men and women of Noble and the Essex County Prosecutor's Office for putting this event together, for their work in the community and for highlighting the accomplishments of each of the honorees. 
May the honorees always remember your words in Psalm chapter 121, verses 1, 2, and 3. They read like this, I look up toward the mountains. Where can I find help? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of the heaven and earth. He will not let you fall. Your guardian will not fall asleep. Father, we also pray for the great leadership of the great county of Essex, the county executive, Joseph DiVincenzo, Prosecutor Theodore Stevens, Chief Mitchell McGuire, and all of the distinguished dignitaries and guests that have joined us this evening. Please continue to strengthen them as they make difficult decisions and life-changing decisions for each, each and every day. Give them wisdom, show them mercy, and grant them the resolve they need to justly and impartially do your will. Lastly, Father, last year was a terrible year and memorable one. We saw sickness, we saw death, and the ugly face of social injustice, but we also saw the good of humanity as we all drew closer together to fight the challenges we faced. Thank you for all the good men and women of, the, of all backgrounds that stood up to make a difference in our communities. I am reminded of the great words of Dr. Martin Luther King as he said, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in the moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. I pray these words resonate in all of us this evening as we collectively seek justice, serve justice, and attempt to do justice. Grant us traveling mercies as we all head home. Bless each and every one here. We pray these things in your name, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Prosecutor, are we done? Yes. Yes. Amen. I think we're done. I just want to do again, again thank everybody for going through this. It's uh, well worth the effort, and our honorees couldn't be really more worthy. Um, sorry about the technical glitches. We will work on that going forward. And I promise the next one, if we have to do this again, we're going to even have background music. So we'll work on that going forward. But in the meantime, thank you so much again, Anthony Johnson. You, you are a blessing, and you are absolutely. Uh, one of the best uh, in our area and New York, New Jersey, you know, you're a treasure. So we appreciate you and for staying with us this whole time as well. So, and mm -hmm. that same for everyone. Thank you for staying with us. Good night. God bless. And we'll see you again, hopefully very, very soon. Thank, Thank you. you.